Hey everyone, Gerard Scarpacey here. Uh, really looking forward to sharing with you today. It's been a little while since uh, I did some cutting for my friends here on Facebook. I'm a craft hairdresser and the co-founder of the Hairbrain community. And uh, I'm gonna be coming to you guys every Wednesday for the next six weeks or so. Uh, obviously we always have tons of guests and different people, but I wanted to share a bit as well. So I'm going to be working here. Uh, you can see I've done some pre-sectioning. I have kind of a pie section above the round of the head, a pie section split into two below the round of the head. I'm starting on the temple with the head tilted away from me. And the goal here is to build a beautiful graduated head shape and do it in panels. Uh, I started off at the front hairline with my first guideline, basically cutting more horizontally to get the length in that I want here. Uh, right about base of the earlobe. I'm continuing to work back diagonally and with each section I lift and rotate my fingers in a little bit more. I'll turn this around Cal so you can get a better angle from the back now that everyone sees the sections. I think you'll be able to see more of the cutting action this way. Sections are going diagonally back and each section lifted more than the previous and rotated more until my fingers are more upright. So basically in about three sections, this is a pretty small head on a bigger head, it might take more sections than that. Went from cutting a baseline that was slightly graduated and turned it around into graduation. I wanna say hello to everyone that's watching. Give me, uh, let me know where you're watching from. If you have any questions, uh, we are here I'm with my wife Kelly. Say hi Kelly. Hi everyone. Kelly's always looking for your questions and to give you guys shout outs. We're here in Southern California. Uh, fortunately salons have been finally been able to reopen here within the past week or so. Um, so there's been that progress but now all throughout the state of California we have fires happening um, here in our lovely home in Southern California. You can see there's, uh, I don't know if you can tell, can they see that? It's like a little bit of a orange glow in the background here. So pray for California. You know, we're a strong place, so I think we'll make it through, but we could always use your support. Cindy wants to know what kind of haircut you're doing. And Steven Statlin says hello. Hey guys, so Cindy, this is, a, it's a graduated haircut. It's a woman's short graduated haircut. Graduation, you know, in this case to me is really going to build up a beautiful feminine head shape. And by keeping length through the inside is going to make it very versatile um, rather than having this beautiful contour here to me is going to make for a very feminine head shape and it's going to allow for a lot of movement within the shape. Steven, how you doing? My buddy Steve Statlin there, he's always doing lives to keep, uh, keep the community inspired. So give a, if you haven't, check out Steven Statlin from Asbury Park doing stuff constantly on his Facebook page. Yeah, here, as well as Raina Twigs. Welcome, everybody. All good people. David, uh, legendary hair cutter, wrote a brilliant book, a hair cutter's handbook, that I was fortunate to uh, have a little quote in. And I'm sure he'll be uh, familiar with a shape like this. It's a graduated shape. People tend to call it round graduation. It's gonna be rounded from front to back, and then also from bottom to top. It's gonna round through a bit, the graduation. You know, it's kind of the uh, grandchild of the firefly, or maybe what some people might think of as a wedge. Ross sees that you're pressing the comb against the head during sectioning. Is that helping with elevation? You know, to me, the comb's like kind of like a magic wand. You know, I use it to really control the hair always. Um, I use it to obviously take clean sections here. I'm using a YS Park 338. Is this 338, Cal? I, I believe think. so. Yep. Wide spine. <clears throat> it's got a stronger spine, which I like, over the 339. And then, you know, the comb really helps me at this point feel the head shape. I know I want to comb down. If I comb straight out or above, I'm not going to build the same amount of weight that I want to. So I go in there, I grab the root, I comb down, I really smooth it out and ribbon it. I try to keep a nice even tension. And with this haircut, I have to orbit the head, meaning I have to walk around. Otherwise, I'm gonna end up with a really big corner 
Um, very, very wedgy and perhaps even kind of mullety if I get the angle wrong. One of the things I'm really excited about is I'm using our brand new HB Pro with an anatomical grip, if you guys can see that. Really proud of these. We worked with uh, a Japanese master, uh, Takahashi-san, formerly of the Hikari Company, to make this incredible, incredible scissor. Um, it's going to go on sale this Friday, and it's without a doubt the highest quality scissor or shear that we've ever produced at Hairbrain. We've always, you know, gone out of our way to make good quality that was affordable. Now we wanted to make the best possible quality. Um, still, I think at an affordable price, this is a $529 scissor, um, comparable with $800 to $1,000 scissors of the same kind of ilk. So you can see the sections, you know, they're, they'll crisscross when I come across from the opposite side, slowly working my way across, getting great even tension. And what you want to do from side to side is find a point like, you know, I want to cross the spine and hit the outside of the opposite shoulder. That'll really help me when I come to the other side to keep balance on. So you have some um, real scissor, scissor, I don't want to say nerds, but seems like mm -hmm. it. Steven is saying that they look like Hikari and Junior is saying that he would like one as well. Yeah. So, you know, the history behind these is they're made by Ta Takahashi-san, who is uh, one of the former um, members of the Hikari company in Japan. So, you know, he, we worked with this company on our last two scissors and I said to him, you know, I'd love to have something that really emulates that quality. So yes, if you really know your scissors, you'll recognize what you see here. Um, what, what these don't need is that ride, that Teflon piece, because Mr. Takahashi made a, um, a new screw that prevents that friction. So again, loving these. I hate to say it, I'm, I'm afraid I might cut myself because this is the first time actually um, I had testers that I used for a year and gave feedback on, and then I gave a pair to my good buddy Julian Perlingero, um, and he loved those, but as I was going to say, with a brand new pair of ultra laser sharp uh, scissors is what I prefer to call them, but some people call them shears, you know, sometimes you have to worry about cutting yourself. So if you hear me scream and run. Hey, you're getting a band-aid. You can see how laser sharp they cut. So, you know, so I don't back into the camera. I'm just turning the tripod a little bit to get that orbit effect all the way down into the nape here. Ross was wondering, um, he was going, it seems like you mentioned it, but he was going to ask, or she, I'm not sure, um, how do you maintain your finger angle, finger, finger angle at the imaginary point? That's a tongue twister. It huh? was. <clears throat> the imaginary point helps you do that, right? Because you, you're always looking, you know, really from the beginning of this haircut, once you start to rotate and elevate right about here, you're, you should be hitting that same point on the body all the way through. Sometimes people will put a clip on the gown. I've done that a lot in training where we'll put a clip on the gown and we'll say, fingertips always go into that clip. Um, you know, so it's really, it's quite visual, but you can use some technical help. Now, one of the things that I find can throw this shape off is we start to hold it more horizontally. And that's not wrong, but it's not going to build as seamless of a shape. It'll start to build a heavier shape and perhaps a weight line where when I orbit all the way through like so, I'm going to get a nice invisible seamless shape rather than pivoting my hand more and more horizontal. That's one of the things I think that really helps differentiate it perhaps from, you know, kind of the standard kind of 1960s type of shape. I can come through horizontally if I want to do some cross checking. And here I'm, you can see the roundness of the shape. And that's what's coming from my body position and kind of moving as I cut. Continuing through, one or two more sections to cross over here. That's something that's kind of um, unique to this shape. There aren't many types of shape other than this type of graduation where you kind of crisscross your sections. It really helps to build a beautiful roundness through the back. But be careful not to overdirect too much and build a corner. That's why I keep moving or stepping into what I'm cutting or turn the chair. Like I can literally turn the chair each time. 
Obviously, in the salon, if you've got elbow room, you can walk around or you can turn the chair. And you can see just kind of riding right in across to the opposite area, landing on the mastoid on the opposite side of the head. That's the bone that protrudes behind the ear. You know, when that hair is wet and combed down, you'll see the weight area. By the time I work through this whole haircut, we won't, there won't be a weight line, but there's definitely a weight area. And then we're gonna manage that. It's one of the reasons why I like to subsection this into basically three different panels. It really, you know, I have big hands, so I could probably do the underneath in one panel, but where the head shape changes here, I'll show you, this little panel on the round of the head makes a big difference for me in control and making sure I don't get too heavy and condense the hair. All right, this is probably my last section because I'm just about completely crossed over. coming right through, walking around the head, and landing in this corner behind the ear. Using the fine teeth of the comb for a good, even tension and control, and keeping my fingers evenly taut. Okay, so one of the challenges of a round shape, if you cut them this way, and you know that's the way I recommend from front to back with something you want to be rounded, is you have to start a whole new guideline on the second side. You know, when you start in the back, very often you can just kind of follow the guide uh, from the back all the way through. But with this shape, you're always starting a new guide. So the first thing I want to do is use facial cues I was just showing a little bit of the um, earlobe on this side, right into about the tip of the nose. I'd look in the mirror to see how, how balanced the features are because, you know, mannequins are usually pretty balanced, but sometimes people can be slightly asymmetric. And I want to take extra time on this section. That's how crucial it is. I like to turn the head and push it away from me a little bit. That'll help me build weight. Generally, I kind of get my fingers in here square because that's kind of the angle that I'm starting off with. And then I just give them a little bit of a twist so the fingertips are a little higher than the knuckle. Now, I think that's gonna be a little longer than the other side. That's my natural inclination with a shape like this because if I cut it shorter, then I have to go back and recut the whole first side. Okay, close. Now I, I creep up on it. Just a little bit of a dusting until I get it. So again, that's my natural inclination here. Um, I can't say that I never make a mistake and cut it shorter, but I try not to because this whole first size is already done and that would kind of be a problem. Ross says, every time I cut round graduation, I hear your voice behind me. <laughs> okay, right on. And Cindy says, with the haircut- Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and Cindy says, with this haircut, can you have bangs? Yeah, absolutely. You can see the way the top is sectioned away. Um, this shape will, it'll blend in and there'll be shorter lengths around the face. But you know, you can always, you know, the bang is just something you can disconnect from any shape, really. I mean, you can take a little area and, and cut whatever you want into it if you learn how to section uh, appropriately. All right, I feel pretty balanced right now. I'm just gonna dust it one more time. I think I, maybe I'm just a dusting still too heavy on this side. I feel bad for Ross hearing my voice. <laughs> But hey, maybe that gets his round grad perfect. Maybe. Yeah, I have to say, you know, it's something as a young hairdresser at Sassoon that, you know, I was very challenged with cutting beautiful, perfect round grad it, even in, in an even more classic approach than this. Um, and, you know, I like a good challenge. So I really, I really put it under the microscope and tried to examine and understand everything about graduating the hair and doing it in a rounded way. Um, and I was fortunate because I was a teacher at a very young age. That was like my lab where I got to experiment and work with literally thousands of students and say, try this, try that, see how this works, see how that works. And um, I'm you know, so grateful for that. It seems with this haircut, you've got a lot going on. You've got to make sure your finger position is correct and you're also rotating. Absolutely, you know, I call it you know, weight management. There's so many things to think about. I mean, there's all the fundamentals of tension, over direction, and elevation. 
um, which you have to think about in every haircut. Um, and then there are, you know, the finger angles, which can, you know, take it to that next level. So tension over direction, finger angle, body position. <clears throat> the thing is to practice so much with haircuts like this that you don't have to think about it anymore. Um, it becomes second nature, you know. And then when that becomes second nature, that's when you start to have the opportunity to really become a master of the craft. You know, until it becomes second nature, you're really still in the journeyman, apprentice journeyman phase. Um, and for a lot of us, that can last a long time. We get sidetracked, we, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, but I think when all those things, the, the controlling the distribution of weight becomes second nature, becomes intuitive, where you don't really even have to think about it anymore, then your creativity has room to really creep in. So, you know, for me, um, you know, I don't typically cut haircuts exactly like this. You know, when I work on clients, I, I let in some more free form. I definitely love to work with the razor, dry cutting, lots of texturizing. Um, but the, the root behind everything that I'm doing really comes from this. And I think that's why it's so important that I constantly try to share it and encourage other educators to share this type of work. So as I get to the back where the head starts to round away, you'll notice I push the head forward and I move my body. I was kind of orbiting from here to about here. Now I really need to make a big turn, otherwise I'm gonna get a huge corner. Maybe some of you guys, let me know what you think about the new harebrained shirt we've been working on. Came up with this cool, I know it's hard to read, but it says harebrained and then all these little things are all different hair cutting, color, styling terms. Slicing, pointing, teasing, highlighting, uh, that form the brain. And our good buddy Gino Chapman really pulled this one together. So we haven't produced it yet, but let me know what you guys think of our new brain shirt. Okay, so again, over directing towards the previous section and really moving my body. If I stay in one place now, the tip of the scissor and the knuckles need to be pointed through the spine to the outside of the shoulder basically the mirror image of what they were on the other side for me to get a great balance here. All right, Ross has confirmed that your voice in the back of his head does perfect his round grad and uh, he was fortunate. Was that Ross from Sassoon Academy? Yes, he says, I feel fortunate to- Cosmetology student. Correct. 30 years, however many years ago that was. Yes, he was fortunate to learn, to be there uh, and learn from you at that time. Yeah, we had some awesome times. I think Ross is down in San Diego. I don't know if he still is but great guy, good old friend, and one of the original hair nerds. Before that was even a thing, we were all nerding out. Again, you can see that flow. <clears throat> the section's flowing diagonally across. Now there's sometimes with round graduation where your sections pivot and you build the weight to make it heavier and heavier. I'm keeping all the sections parallel. And again, these are one of the things for me that makes it a little bit more modern and seamless as opposed to the traditional firefly. You know, it's really a study in distributing weight in a rounded, graduated way that then becomes the foundation for so many other things. So again, at this point, I should be able to comb down, see a rounded weight area. I'm gonna make sure there's not a heavy weight line as the haircut progresses. Uh, but you know, at this point below the round of the head, without any checking or refining. You know, there's a corner on this graduation, at least there should be. So this corner right here, it's when we take that off too soon that we flatten the shape out. And in this stage of the haircut, I don't wanna take that off yet. I will soften it through refining and blending and extending as the haircut progresses. You know, I've got large hands and I always find in the bottom, I turn around and I cut backhand. And a great scissor, a great shear like this one should cut just as well this way as it does um, forehand. And it, it does. I mean, the hair is just melting off in my fingers. So happy with that. Going to release these on Friday. We just got our first delivery from Japan. And uh, I was so excited. You know, we've worked with this company before. But when we wanted to make a special, really special scissor, Mr. Uh, Takahashi-san or Mr. Takahashi, 
So he would make them himself. And this is a legendary scissor crafter, blade master. And he made every single one of these by himself. And man, they feel amazing. Right into the nape. Crisscrossing through the center now. I'll start to really reach into some previously cut hair. And then I'll really be able to work on perfecting my balance, you know, if it's a little bit off. You know, I shouldn't, I've been moving, so I shouldn't have too much of a corner, but I, you know, I almost always need to do a little checking to perfect and get a really graceful roundness from side to side. But it shouldn't be so much that I have to come in and really take off a heavy corner. Again, last few sections in this area. Let me know where you're watching from. You know, I've heard from some of my friends. I'm always looking to make new friends. That's one of the reasons why I want to start doing this series every Wednesday. You know, um, as much as I love featuring other artists here on Facebook, which we do a ton of, um, I wanted to jump in, be part of the game too. So let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what you're interested in learning because I'm going to be doing these classes every Wednesday and I'd love to help, you know, deliver what you guys need. So let me know other lessons. Now, I specialize in cutting, so unfortunately, I can't really teach you color. I can do a little bit of styling, but I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to styling. So when it comes to cutting, what would you guys love to learn? Let me know. And Kelly will share it with me. All right, coming all the way across, I think my balance is going to be pretty good. There'll be a little tweaking to do right now. I'm going to just approach it the simplest way possible. I'm just going to come right up the center here horizontally. I'll turn around so my scissor hand is towards the camera. And, you know, this is where we want to make sure we don't have a corner. And I don't. It's nicely rounded. And I just want to continue to help it be really nicely rounded. Sectioning horizontally. And, you know, when I say rounded, what I'm looking for is like a little smile as I cut. Hold that hair. Let me just take a look for that. And you see I come in with a scissor and it just drives slightly rounded, no heavy corner. All right, Gerard, we've got friends from Canada and uh, North Carolina, New Mexico, Boston, Oahu, Aloha. Oh boy, Oahu. Texas, Oregon, freehand tips would be nice. From Ross, watching from New Zealand, Hannah Ruth Evans loves a round grad demo. Uh, Sharon says more cutting. Working out towards behind the ears and cross-checking. Just coming on a slight diagonal, now going forward. And really feeling good about this. I'm really just kind of sanding out any little bumps or lumps. And this area is where you'll notice I put it over, I bring it out, and I want to put it over the fingers as I check. Why? That will help to soften any corner of graduation at the top and make it more seamless as it blends into the next area. Mike was wondering um, if you have any advice in terms of navigating a mentor or finding the right salon. He says he's pretty, he thinks he's pretty talented. He's told he's a natural, but he's not confident. Okay, the advice I always give when it comes to salons, finding the right salon is it's kind of like dating. You know, the first person that you date, you know, it, it might not be the right one for you. Some people get lucky and it is, but usually you have to, you know, date a little bit and meet different people. And what you think is <clears throat> maybe perfect for you, you're kind of, it changes. So don't be afraid. I'm not someone to say, oh, jump around and switch salons like crazy, but don't feel bad if you have to, you know, explore to find other places. Um, I will find the, I will say the best way to find salons is to use your network. You know, we all have friends who are hairdressers. Uh, we try to build that network. If someone works someplace and they tell you how great the environment is, how great the culture is, you know, a mentor that they have there. I mean, that's how I got started. And when I was in cosmetology school, another student said, oh, you have to meet the owner of my salon. I think he would love you. You know, you seem like someone who's going to be really passionate about this and maybe a little more cerebral. You gotta use your network. Don't feel bad about, you know, dating, kind of 
getting around town a little bit, but always do it professionally, you know? Um, and don't be afraid to reach out to people. You know, in today's day and age, we're so connected. I mean, I literally, you know, get messages from people all the time. I do my best to engage with people. Don't be afraid to reach out to people that you respect. You know, you never get tired of hearing, oh, I really respect you, I'd love to learn from you, you know. But the thing is, you know, don't be demanding. I think sometimes people show up and they're just like so demanding where, and this is a lesson that I learned. I don't know if David is uh, still watching, but we had a similar mentor uh, named Vernon Keach. And Vernon used to say to all of us when we were assistants, it's your job to inspire me. It's like, I've got the knowledge and I can share it with you, but it's your job to inspire me to want to be a hairdresser and to keep doing it. You know, whether that means sharing your passion, because you know, if you've been doing hair every day for years and years and years, a round grad might get a little boring. I mean, honestly, if I wasn't sharing this, if I didn't think it had value to people, I wouldn't be like, oh my God, I'm doing a round grad for the 500,000th time. But I'm inspired because I know you guys are out there and you want to learn and you want to share and you want to grow. So you're inspiring me. All right, so I've dropped down the next panel. Now this is just, the, the, the separation was below the round of the head, above the round of the head. This is such a major area where the head shape changes that rather than cut this all in one, I like to subsection it in two. Now again. Is that because you already have the guide in place and you're... Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna add to the guide here. Um, you know, it, it just makes it more controllable. And it's gonna be a little miniature version of what I just did, starting lower going higher and higher and blending in. Next section, diagonal back, elevating out off the head shape a little bit more, and down towards the previous section. And even from this point, I'm gonna turn around again. Uh, my scissors should be going all the way through the spine to the opposite shoulder. You know, if your graduation um, is meant to be stable like this, you're always cutting at the exact same angle as you build up. It's this same angle all the way through. You've got some support with Ira Ludwig. He says, this is cool. He's never watched a great haircut while roasting a chicken on his big <laughs> green egg. My good friend, Ira, I hope you got, you know, Ira, brilliant businessman. He's had uh, successful salons probably for well over 30 years. Um, I know you probably went through a very difficult time now, someone who's used to having so much success and being able to grow their business probably year after year. I hope you've, uh, you're pulling through, Ira, because I know that, you know, this has been hard for even the most incredible business owners. You can see I check through into some of the underneath. And again. Oh, Jennifer Warner-Reese was saying that Vernon was awesome. He was a ball buster, but only to make you better. I apprenticed with him and think of him often. Oh, that's, uh, do, do I know, do I know you, Jennifer? Jennifer uh, Warner-Reese. obviously must have worked at Sassoon. I don't, I don't remember if we worked together. Uh, but yeah, Vernon, you know, there was a love-hate thing. That's sometimes with, with the best mentors. Because a, a great mentor is not just there to make you feel good and, you know, edutain you, as many of us, you know, may have to do nowadays. A great mentor is someone who cares enough to, to you know, to sometimes tell you that you did a bad job and why you did it. Um, you know, and he was definitely that guy. Uh, Jennifer's mentioning that she apprenticed, apprenticed in New York. What years? I'm sure she'll get yeah. back to us. And Mike was saying he was trying to figure out why his round grad was a little off. And it's this part, I believe he's talking about the second, second section. Uh, it makes sense. Awesome. So you can, you know, at this point you can really see the shape coming through here. Still a little top heavy, um, which it should be at this stage. You know, that's the, the thing about wet or damp hair cutting. You need to know what stage you're at and you can't go, oh, that's too heavy right now. It actually needs to be this heavy at this point or I'm gonna flatten it out as the haircut um, proceeds. So, you know, there's a process to it. Sections coming across the back. Ira's following up. Uh, yes, he's hanging in there. It's tough. Uh, small business is not sexy right now, Ira. We completely understand yeah, there, was, there wasn't too many people out there for the little guy, especially the hairdresser. Um, you know, it seems like a lot of our industry is, you know, beginning the recovery right now. But, you know, we'll see 
how well that goes. And, you know, in California, I can, and no other state has been reclosed down. California was, you know, and that was a really hard hit, you know, being that we're based in California and a lot of our community is here. Um, wow. You know, I'll be honest, you know, I was 100% supportive of the first shutdown. I think that's what we needed to do to slow the spread. I think we needed to learn, which many of us did, and how to put in the proper practices. And then when we were all ready to reopen, we reopened with gusto. And uh, here in California, the data will show that salons were safe. They were practicing uh, incredible protocols. And then we got shut down again. And that was, you know, I think most of you probably know it. But the good news is, open back up um, September 1st. Thereabouts, most of California, there are a few. There might be still a few counties even that aren't completely open. Yes, um, Anna Smith is saying that Hawaii is closed now. I'm not sure. And Diane was wondering, is this real hair or synthetic? This is 100% real hair. Um, normally, we work almost exclusively with pivot point mannequins, but I've, you know, been, we've been shipping them around to people all over the world. This mannequin comes from our friends at Davidez. Um, and it's a, they bring them in from Italy. It's 100% human hair. They look a little funny with the lights coming off it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a raw color because it's lifted like this so that you can color it. Um, but I kind of dig it. Well, so again, you can start to see that rounded graduation coming through. See how it builds off of this weight, comes around. I love that loose texture to it, and boom, does that. That's why it's got, it's sometimes nicknamed an orbit because you're orbiting the head. Now let's do that on the other side, and then we'll connect all the pieces together through the top. Junior has confirmed it in Oahu. It's reclosed. How it sad. Is. Oh my this God, is, I didn't know that. This is week two of proposed four. Junior, how awful. I'm sorry to hear that, but you know, I've also, you know, I, to a certain degree, I'm sympathetic because Hawaii being, an, uh, a, especially Oahu, being a, a small island with, you know, I think that they're being extra crazy um, precautions. precautions, but still. That's what I've heard. I have, you know, quite a few friends who live in Hawaii and they say it's been from day one so strict because living on an island, if it starts to spread around, it's going to be a big problem. There's really to soon. Go. So again, starting on the second side, connecting to my line, elevate, 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 follow through. And all the time orbiting the head. You got to keep moving. Kind of move your feet, move your body, or move the head towards you. And all the time, see that cutting angle? All the way across to the opposite shoulder. Consistency. Again, you know, I love so many different ways. You know, I think of hair cutting like uh, language. And I think, you know, some of the most interesting people, um, most intelligent people, speak many different languages. Um, and that's how I like to think about hair cutting. Like this is a language, this precision cutting, precision geometric, it's a language. Um, one language isn't better than the other. You know, we don't go around saying, oh my God, English is just so much better than French. You know, they're just different. Um, and the more languages you speak, I, I would dare say, you know, someone who speaks five, six, seven languages is probably gonna be a pretty smart person. It's just the way it develops the brain, if you think about it. And I think a hair cutter that can speak a lot of languages with their hands, I'd like to hope that I'm one of them, um, can be a pretty smart hair cutter. Follow through. Getting to that big turn in the head here. You know, if you really have the time, you know, this might seem like overkill, but you can go through every section from top to bottom every single time. You know, and that'll really make sure you have a tight shape. If you don't know what to look for, you might, you know, make a mistake. But if you do, it's just going to keep refining it more and more. Coming across. Not a ton to cut, but very important. I'm going to lower the, in this area here, my hand is lower because my fingertips are down. Now the head's in a weird position where I could almost lose this. So I'm gonna make sure her chin is not so buried right now because it's down just a little too much. So that's a much better position. 
low, but the chin isn't buried into the chest. I was feeling your metaphor there. Right on. I was definitely a smart dude. He can get it. Anybody that can last in this industry for decades and keep growing, you know, you got to be smart. Smart in a lot of ways. Okay, again, blending through. Last few sections as I transition from one side to the other. You know, normally, you know, so many of you that are uh, commenting or people that I would see throughout the year, you know, one of the things great about Hairbrain is I get to travel, go to all the different shows, all the different events, all the different academies. It's been a long time. So hopefully, you know, 2020, we'll all be seeing each other again. Cause you know, uh, 2021. Oh, sorry. 2021. Sorry. 20. Thank you for correcting me, Cal. That's you're so good at that. Crossing over the center. making sure we're connected through. Then again, there'll be a little bit of checking. I'm gonna check this area a little bit differently though. Why? I wanna lift it a little bit higher and make sure we're getting a really weightless shape. So we're above the round of the head now. If I keep checking from here, it's gonna keep it heavy, which if that was my choice, that's fine. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna actually come over the head and cross check this higher. Hope Hannah is still with us. She was jogging your cross check earlier. Coming over the top of the head and dusting. Yeah, I mean, I never take it for granted that the shape is going to be rock solid um, because when you do, that's when you start to lose it. You always need checking and refining. And even a rock solid shape will get better with checking and refining. So as we said, with a shape like this, it almost, you know, trails a little bit too heavy and it gets lighter and lighter as you get to the end. If it gets too light too quick, you're probably gonna flatten it out. Jose Rivera was wondering, or I'm out of curiosity, what advice do you have for stylists who are having trouble either getting hired or changing salons at the moment? That's a really good question. You know, I think obviously um, it's a tough time. So I think a lot of, you know, salons, maybe if you, you know, they, they're, they're doubtful what their future is going to be. So I'd imagine it's difficult to hire. I, I do feel, you know, I've heard it and seen it from a lot. Of, a lot of people are changing. I mean, I, I would be petrified to do that um, right now. I know a lot of people are, you know, taking advantage of this time and changing salons. Maybe they weren't happy in. I probably wouldn't. I would probably just lock down and try to get through this really challenging time personally. But, you know, I don't understand. I don't know what the personal um, Why? situation just, is. Well, just because it's, you, it's so difficult. Like you said, you can change salons. You're going to lose your that clients. salon will have to close down for six weeks. I mean, when you change salons, you lose clients anyway, no matter what. Even if they love you, it's just like, well, you know, it just happens. It's the math of the game. I will say a lot of times people, when they change places, they, they can lose upwards of 30% of their clients. Um, and to change during such a difficult time, now again, I'm just speaking for myself because I don't know anyone's personal situation, but I would really triple think if now was the time to change. I feel like a lot of people have, I keep seeing it, yeah, but, but I personally probably wouldn't. I'm a little too cautious uh, and you know, I would think, well, hey, it's already going to be a tough time. Last thing I need to do is change. Uh, Anna is mentioning that she knows a lot of stylists that went to independent studio concept. Yeah, so I mean, I think that that's a little bit different. I do know, I'm not saying it's better, but I can imagine, well, if they felt like they had good contact with their clients and they're going to say, hey, it's going to be safe in this place, I, I could perhaps understand that change a little bit more, although I still probably wouldn't do it. I don't think any... Major change is, is great for the dollars and cents right now, um, but I can understand it a little bit more. But with that, you also have to keep in mind um, the different ways of bookkeeping. You have to be in charge of so much, saving for taxes and keeping your inventory. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, I think, you know, I, again, in traditional times, people would think, well, going independent, I'm gonna be my own boss, great, but 
you know, being the boss is very difficult, and being your own boss can be one of the most difficult jobs that there is. Um, you know, so I think it's you know it's definitely something to really think through to really look at your strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, in terms of how good you are at managing yourself and managing your time and marketing and promoting, and everyone's going to make their own individual choice. For me, um, you know, I would pro definitely not make any major changes myself right now. And I'm not. I still do clients, um, and I've tried to, to make absolutely nothing change in regard to how and when and where and why I do them. Okay, now coming in to the top, around the face. Now what I want to do is begin to extend this line. So it, ultimately what I'm trying to do is bring it around and connect it into this graduation. If I pull it all the way over here and cut the first section when it falls back, it might make a, a hole because of the hairline and so forth. So again, you're going to start lower. You're going to come down. And you're going to kind of square your fingers off with the line. I might lift the front a little bit to incline it towards the shape I was just talking about. So if I do check it out here, it's keeping some length. It will naturally add a little bit of roundness to the top um, to lighten the graduation as well. So you see, I'll cut it here. When I bring it up here, it's going to start to bevel through a little bit. Okay? And that is kind of the finish of this. You know, sometimes what people, why people called it a round graduation because the graduation was rounded through um, both horizontally and vertically. So hence, no heavy weight lines. So Joel, ta it. Joel Taylor's loving this haircut. How do I stay on course with the diagonal parting? Yeah, I mean, it's all very consistent. It's all about Here's the, fur, the hairline. So I started off the hairline. I followed the hairline here. It pretty much follows the front hairline all the way through. Um, now you can play with that. You can go more forward, more upright, um, depending on how you want to build the weight. But typically for what I've done here, I just follow the front hairline constantly. And I constantly check it through to the underneath. You know, and if you've got the time, which hopefully you do, You'll comb all that hair neatly out of the way and you'll be able to really see your line. Lifting a little bit higher now with the second section and getting a little bit of roundness as we come through here. And that's because of the way we cut that first section. So, you know, sometimes people, there's so many terms in art. It's an internal graduation. It's a round graduation. When it falls down, it should keep the solid line. But when I lift it up this way, you'll see it going from the graduation in the bottom and then gently curving. These are not layers, you know, because look at the root direction. They actually are 45 degrees off the base of the section. So it's a continuation of the graduation, if that means anything to you. through. As I work towards the back, I tend to drop the client, put the head down a little bit so my body doesn't have to work so hard. Getting old here. It's my 30th year as a hair cutter. So proud of that, but also tired. Working all the way up to the parting and coming through. Put a nice tension on the hair, making sure that there's a fluid line. There's going to be graduation on the line here. Depending on how we finish it, we can, you know, I, I almost never really straighten hair a lot. I like movement and texture in hair. So those little edges, I kind of usually like them. I've just evolved to be someone who likes things a bit softer and a little bit more raw on the edges. Cindy's still hoping for his fringe with this girl. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, after... If you wanted, you could follow through and then you could take a little triangle and cut a fringe in. Maybe we'll, well, you know, sometimes I do lessons on bangs or fringes. Maybe that'll be one of these six week lessons. I did a, I did a six week program for all the pivot point students all over the country. Um, and I just tried to think like, what are some really important things that they're gonna need to learn when they get out of school 
to make themselves valuable in the salon. And one of them to me was bangs and fringes. I mean, it's a great way to, you know, help a salon that's busy by doing bang trims or fringe trims. It's a great way to build new clients by saying, hey, you know, I'll give you a free bang trim um, and, you know, or something. So maybe that would be one of the lessons I do. I've taught about five or six different ways to incorporate bangs, fringes into any other shape, how to section them out and how to kind of blend them in. Coming through, following through. Now always combing down and again, by now there should be no weight line. Just weight, but no weight line. And you know, that's all by controlling, it's controlling weight distribution, you know? Um, you, if you don't want to make a weight line, don't make one. Okay, now I'm going to switch to over the hand cutting. The head shape has made a big turn. See that? So to elevate this properly, I need to come over the fingers and work through here. And again, this is a good example of why it's technically not layered. If you look at, you know, the hair grows out, this is 90 degrees. We're way over here, so it's still truly 45, and I'm just rounding through. Now you could do this and still continue to cut heavier and heavier, but then we definitely have a weight line. Yeah, it would look like a firefly or what some people might call a wedge or a Dorothy Hamill or something like that. This is definitely a relationship. But here, we don't have a weight line. And the hair gets pretty, pretty thick at the top, so if I've managed it properly, then it's been a really good uh, execution. Come through, rounding through. Now what makes this versatile is how long it is in here, you know? Um, and the fact that a shape like this really should be able to be pushed in almost any direction because of the nature of the round graduation here. It's coming to the parting here. Last section on this side. And then all we have is a little, kind of a mini side. Again, thrilled with this, with the new uh, HB Pro. It's called the AG, it stands for anatomical grip. Um, you know, I've always liked simple scissors. I don't think scissors need a lot of bells and whistles. They need to be laser sharp, well balanced. And this is one of the simplest but most advanced handles there is because it's anatomically correct. So they're it even. You. It's an e it, you know it's an even scissor, but the, well, the thumb bends one way, the pointer finger bends the other way, and what that allows you to do is put the littlest amount of your finger in there, no matter which way you hold or work with the scissor. Um, and yes, it, made by Mr. Takahashi Takahashi-san from Japan, former Akari master. Um, so thrilled to be able to work with him and, and make this incredible scissor. Will be available starting Friday. Five hundred and twenty-nine dollars for the five and a half inch. Uh, they come in very small batches because he makes them all by hand. So you know they'll come and go. But that's that's the nature of how it goes. All right, coming to the light side of the parting now. Again, you can see that first section parallel to the hairline. Comb down, find the line, lift up just a tiny bit, but not too much. Comb down, find the line, lift up just a tiny bit. You know, if you're afraid, if there's a calic or something, you can always tap before you cut. Now what I'm gonna do is bring these over like a bob. And I'm gonna check it where it's gonna be worn. That and that, they need to be even there. Feels like there's one like little long strand here. Um, Jennifer West is saying that she loves these tutorials. Uh, classic shapes are a basic for so many modern styles, and a classic never go out of style, never go out of fashion. Totally, it's like learning your alphabet. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you know, uh, you gotta really understand that to put words together. Simplest way I can I can describe it. And George, just to make sure, double check for Junior. These are five and a halfs. Yep, they're also going to come in six inch. We just don't have those yet. We don't have them yet. We're waiting for Takahashi-san to tell us when they're ready. <laughs> I'm excited for that day. We're actually sold out of all of our HB 
We've had a, a, you know, great support. I think you know, a lot of people were so grateful for all the education that when they needed tools, they came to us and we sold out of, we have two, uh, two scissors already, the HB Pro One, which is our workhorse, kind of inexpensively priced, but high quality scissor. It's in the $325 range. And then we also have a dry, I can actually show them to you, because they'll be back in stock soon. That's our HB Pro One, the offset handle, also made by um, Mr. Takahashi's company. He didn't make these all personally, but his team did. And then we've got the HB Pro Dry, which is a wide body, little fat boy scissor, great for dry cutting. Next up, we're gonna be working on a very beautiful blending scissor, but we'll save that for when I have some more information. Okay, so again, where were we, Cal? Finishing off this area here. Find that graduation. There and then lifting is. slightly. Lifting. And because of the way we cut that first line, that makes this slightly rounded through. Because if you cut it here, when you lift it, it's got a natural inversion. And it rounds through a little bit. So you're still building length and weight, but in a slightly rounded way. Now we want to carry on back to the question of the sections. They're all basically parallel, keeping it really simple. They're all basically parallel. Up and toward the previous. We don't want to over direct too much or it'll just be kind of very, very cornery or maybe what we call a wedge through the back. And my scissors backwards there for a moment. Continue. Just this little area left and then we'll have the whole basic shape complete. About this point here is when I start to work more over the fingers. And it has to do with the head curving away from me and me needing more elevation than I can get inside the fingers. So that choice of going from inside the finger to over the finger has a lot to do with Number one, elevation. And number two, head shape in equal amounts. Because here I want to be able to comb down. Now since I want to comb up, it's really not fluid to do it this way, although it's possible. It's much more fluid, comfortable, and you'll have better control like so. Is there anything to think about when switching hand positions when in your cutting style? Yeah, totally. You really have to think about the shape, you know? I think that's the problem that some people have when they're very dogmatic about hand position. You know, they're like, oh, you know, if I do this, this is going to happen. But I think once you've really kind of got control of your hands, you can do a lot of different things, you know? You will tend to cut more round over the fingers. It's harder to, you know, it would be really hard to keep it graduated. But, you know, since we're not trying to cut that angle of graduation, we are actually trying to round it through. And, you know, thinking about your tension, I find that you can usually have a lot more tension over the fingers. So being careful, especially in an area here like the crown, not to stretch the hair too much. You want to have a good grip on it, but you don't want to pull it at the root. You shouldn't see that scalp buckling or being stretched in any way. Okay, coming across. I'm just using the wide side here in this one crown point. It's probably one of the only times I've used the wide side and then cut, just because I know the crown can get a little bit dodgy. I'm making sure I'm getting a good connection there. Again, follow through a bit. Wide side of the comb now, just in this one area on the light side of the parting. I think there's nothing but maybe a few strands. I'm going to take everything from the opposite side of the crown and make sure we've got it. Okay, we've got our basic shape completed, but of course there's going to be a little more checking. So I'm going to come to the heavy side, I'm going to come across the head, and I'm going to kind of almost check it like, like an onion. There's actually a haircut called the breeze where all the sections are cut like an onion. Um, and I've always found it a great way to check a shape like this, but doing it from the top down. Now, deliberately putting a little more elevation on it, 
little bit, you know, what, what goes back to what's in your mind, you know, one of my, who I mentioned earlier, Vernon, one of my mentors, he used to say higher is lighter. So just bringing this up a little bit higher, you know, without having to point cut, not that there's anything wrong with point cutting, I mean, I do it all the time, and I might want to do it on this shape, but the lesson here was about technical cutting. So just using that little bit of bend and blend, a little bit higher elevation. Now dust should be coming off. If you cut more than dust, uh, you're changing the shape. Just dusting through. Oh, say Rivera wants to know if you've been binge watching any reality hair TV shows lately. No, I can't say that I have. I never, you know, I don't know of any reality hair TV. I'm not sure either. Share them with us, Jose. I can't think of any that I really kind of enjoyed or respected or any that I felt portrayed hairdresser. I mean, I know there was sheer genius. I was never a big fan. Uh, I can't think of anything that I, I felt shined a really good light on our industry. But I, there's a lot of stuff I may have missed. But that's just reality TV in general, right? They just want to play with stereotypes. And, you know, it's pretty easy to play with stereotypes in the hairdressing industry. Elevating. So if it's not hair, Gerard, what have you been binge watching? Um, Ozark. Uh, Perry Mason. That's pretty much it. And we don't watch a lot of TV. I mean, every night we'll watch a little bit of PBS uh, news. I just find them to be the most uh, balanced. And, but, you know, I've been trying to finish Ozark, but Kelly never wants to. Once it gets to about 7.30, she's done. <laughs> so it's taken us about three years to get to season three. Let's change the subject. Jose's, okay. Jose's been um, watching Tabitha take over. Tabitha's awesome. We love Tabitha. Yeah, you know, I, I can't say that I ever, you know, really saw that show. Um, as I said, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I, I do know Tabitha, and I think she's a very cool person, and, uh, but maybe I'll have to check out the show. Rounding the corner a little bit off on the heavy side, right here, by coming across the parting, and just taking the little point off right here, very gently. So this should be able to sweep across in different directions. I mean, it's a pretty solid form at this stage, but it should have some fluidity to it. All right, I'll do a little detailing around the perimeters. I'm not gonna go crazy, because really the lesson was about the basic shape. Um, one of the things, especially with, with mannequins, because I tend to cut them a lot, especially during lockdown, I've been using like a blending scissor um, to really kind of come in and work a hairline. Just especially because these can project out a lot. So I want to take that heaviness out first, and then I'll sit them in a little more. Closing on the way out, just kind of tweezing a bit. Now, if your client did have a, a crazy hairline, would you still take out your thinning scissors and? Yeah, I mean, what I'm trying to do here is break the will of the hair. Now, I'm not just coming in and crunching across, and the truth is, this is actually gonna take out less than just traditional point cutting. I almost never use these kind of scissors and cut right across the hair. I use it when I wanna be more gentle than pointing because it's gonna take less out, right? Because two solid blades is gonna take more. Whereas I can go over more, more times here and be more gentle. And it can be kind of similar with scissor over comb. If I was gonna take this kind of hair down, I, I would probably scissor over comb it with something like this too. Now the thing is, if I go, through once, twice, three times, it cuts it blunt. As opposed to just going through once, cutting it blunt. So as I point through here, I might have to point, and, and the more it points, the more regular it's gonna be, which is kind of what I'm going for. You know, I'm talking of scissor over comb, I might do a little bit here also with pointing. And when I lift it up, obviously mannequins have challenging hairlines, but that's good, it's good practice. If you can make this look decent, you know, where do I need to undercut it all the way? There's like this one piece that just comes out completely. There's nothing you can do. 
you have to kind of undercut it and then all of a sudden, wow, it looks so much better. And you know, so I, I, I will say one of the, I think great things that came out of all the education that we've seen during pandemic time is people getting more appreciative of mannequins. Um, you know, good quality mannequins, like pivot point man, this one isn't a pivot point mannequin, but it's, it's fairly decent compared, you know, most non pivot point mannequins I can't even enjoy working with. Um, but the point there was, you know, we still had some people that were like, oh, you can't learn on a mannequin. I, I really beg to differ. I've literally taught thousands and thousands of hairdressers on mannequins. And actually a lot of times they can learn more because they aren't afraid to make a mistake. They aren't afraid to make a mistake. And you know, it can be about the learning and not about the service. And then once, you know, once you've kind of made your discoveries, then of course you're gonna take it back and work on live people with it. So again, look at that hairline really evolving as it dries off. And again, undercutting a little bit like I would on a person. I'd lift it, I'd get under there, I'd look for whatever was kind of lurking underneath there. And again, refining. Lifting in the comb will help me get that graduated flow right the way through to the end. On the sides here, just looking for any like little stray hairs. Obviously, if you were someone who was gonna blow dry this perfectly straight, you could strengthen that line. I'm gonna go the opposite direction and actually kind of break it up. Come through the graduation, just the tip of the blending scissor, open and close without closing all the way. Again, you gotta know, I, I know these particular um, ones that I'm working with here, they're kind of a beautiful one that I'm gonna model what we do at Hairbrain after, um, and they really don't make any lines in the hair. So they're great for this. Just popping off the finger. Again, checking that connection right in here from where the bottom into the top and making sure there's no heaviness there. What's happening now? Why did you choose to do this? Uh, this is called refining. Yeah, I, I, you know, we had a basic shape. It was strong and defined and balanced. This to me is personalizing and customizing and, you know, has a lot to do with the wearability and the grow out of a haircut. And just making the edges, I think, a bit softer and prettier. But that's, you know, everyone's got their own opinion. Some people would like to just come in and make them stronger or not make them strong at all, even from the beginning. All the different languages that we speak. And again, checking on this side to make sure there's not gonna be a very heavy corner here. Popping right off the finger. You can see it just, these are so gentle. All they do is just aerate it a little bit. Could do it with pointing. I think I'd be a little nervous to do the point cutting with my new AGs because I think I would definitely go and cut some of my finger off. But this is a very similar effect. So beautiful round graduated shape. The shape in and of itself to me is quite beautiful. A little bit of refining, you know, this is normally where I'd have the mirror out and that would really allow me to customize. But here I'm just working with what I can see in front of me. Let's see if we have some product here I'm gonna throw in. I'm just gonna use a little bit of invisible serum from our friends at Dabinez. It's a nice and light to give a satiny texture to the hair. And I think we're just going to let, I don't even know what this mannequin's name is, we'll call her Dorothea. That's the modern Dorothy Hamill. A little bit sexier. You know, a round graduation like this also has a little bit of a box bulb feeling. But, you know, again, subtly rounder. Pushing that product into the hair, visually checking. 
and that a little bit goes a long way with this serum. It's from the more inside line. I guess since it's a Davinez mannequin, it's nice to use Davinez product. I'm so lucky to work with literally the 20 best hair care brands in the industry um, and get to use all their products and really get to kind of work with their educators. It's like a dream come true, something that I've worked on for 30 years to get to that level. And there you have it. I'm going to let her air dry. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you tune in with me every Wednesday for at least the next six weeks. Um, leave your messages in the comments. Let me know what else you'd like to learn, anything else you'd like me to share. Uh, pleasure as always and peace out.